Okay, we are at South Shields on the lower top. This is our new job where we are going to be putting this property here because we've built using lime mortar. So we need to put back lime mortar when we are repotting here. Before we do that though, we need to clean this brickwork. These were painted at some point. Right next door is there. The customer has had another company here who tried to remove the paint and they have taken it off quite well, but it's left this red sort of uh, solution which they must have used. I don't remember what the name of the product is, but you, you, you apply a solution to the wall, you put a sheet on the wall, you leave it for however long uh, the duration is, you peel it off and it brings the paint off with it. Assuming what you should do and they haven't done is clean the brickwork down. So we just need to clean that off now. I'm just going to use a stiff brush and it is coming off. There's not much of it. Clean that off there. I'm going to clean it off down there. A friend of ours, Isaac, or otherwise known as Izzy the Bricky, showed us these little bad boys from Irwin. So we are going to give these a try. I've never used these before, but Isaac recommends them and he said that it done a fantastic job and they outlast um, the other motor rakes which are similar to these. Uh, if I can get that off. So this is all that it is. That is the motor rake and that is the adapter which you need the motor rake is just going to go inside that adapter if we just say just pretend that disc isn't on <laughs> that just goes over your nut there and that is it obviously you don't have the disc on it <laughs> test to see how that works and these were quite good as well I've got them on Amazon you've got two motor rakes and you have to buy the adapter Oops, tubes, tubes, like our motor rake and disc. I'm just going to use this disc. Um, I can't remember how much these are, about 20 quid or something. But these last quite quite good. And this will be good for just ripping through that sanded cement motor on there. Um, and then when we get to the lime, it, it, it's going to be whew, like a hot knife through butter. It's going to crack on for a bit now. area this is my area South Shields I know all of these houses around here are filled using lime mortar when you use sand and cement mortar to repoint brickwork that is built lime mortar you can create damage issues there is no cavities in these walls so any moisture that is penetrating through this brickwork is going to get trapped in the mortar joints because the sand and cement is it dries so hard that the, the wall can't breathe anymore so we are breaking out all of this sand and cement mortar. We're going to wash it down because you can see it's absolutely horrendous with the dust. We're going to pressure wash all of that dust out of the joints. We want no dust left in the joint. When you're putting new mug in, you don't want any dust because it's not going to bond to the brickwork. But we are going to be using um, NHL 5.0 lime. And that is because if you have a look down this street, can you see? see that is the C down there so the the number that you see after NHL is the strength of the mortar for resilience to the weather and because the beach is just down there we get a lot of north wind just hammers down these streets and that's why they're fighting so bad on these properties. We're going to get right into this now we're going to get into the video catch up with you in a little bit by the now.
Right, we have finished grinding out this property. Thank God for that. That was a very dusty job, but we done an absolutely fantastic job. Quite awkward in this section along here, just with the bay window being in our way. It was quite difficult to get over there. There's not much height when we were kneeling on the bay window there. So then we came down below here. You've just seen the previous video, how we removed the dust uh, with the pressure washer. You can't have any dust left in them joints, otherwise your new mug will not bond properly. So it needs to be washed out. It's came up very well. I'm quite happy with how it's came up compared to what it was before. We are just going to get cracking now with this pointing. If we are pointing with sand and cement using a mortar gun, I would just use a plasterized whisk in the yellow monkey tub and just mix up small batches, well, well a full batch, just mix up batches in there. But because lime has to be mixed for at least half an hour, you can't be standing mixing up. So we've got the mixer. We're going to shove the, our mix in there. Right then, this is how we are going to mix up our lime water. Show you another bucket here, but I don't want to mix up a full bucket full because we're going to have three parts soft sand, one part sharp sand, and one lime. I've just marked a line if you can see that on the tub there. That's how we're going to do it fill it up to that line, and then we know that we've got um, the correct ratio. Use this sharp sand in our mix, and when we um, bash back our mortar with our chum brush you're going to see all of this aggregate start to come out of the mortar and it's going to look absolutely lovely get that in there one sharp sand in and one cement and one sharp sand in right we, want, we are over two more so we're getting our line in now. We hold one sand. There's our fill line there. I've marked it with a grinder. I'm just gonna get this in. That is the line that we are using. NHL 5.0. Right, so to bear in mind when you're adding water to so your line mix. Mind, the light is a natural um, plasticizer. So if you put loads of water in, you're going to end up not going to mix up. You just want it little bits at a time. Put little bits of water in all of the time. You want it to be quite stiff. This is, this stuff here is maybe a little bit too stiff. You just keep an eye on how it's mixing. Just a tiny, tiny drops, tiny drops of water at a time. that we went for. Once they just be really stiff, you know what I mean? Like that. Perfect. We used three parts sand, one part sharp sand and one part lime. What we're gonna do now start by using this handboard and these stemmers different sizes here. I don't know if you can really see that. So I've just ordered these not long ago. Different sizes. I think we're going to be using this big bad boy, which is 10 mil stemmer. This is my favourite one, like from Marshalltown. It's just really, really nice. These ones seem a bit bendy. It's a bit too bendy on the, uh, on the bottom there near the handle. This is perfect. Anyway, we're going to get into the video. We'll catch up with views in a little bit. Bye.
just finished. This property right here. All of the house will know we have removed 30 mil. Of the water on this property, and we probably using the lime. The lime that we used was NHL 5.0, and the reason we use that is because it is the stronger lime. We need that stronger lime because right down there, 200 meters away, is the North Sea. When we get bad weather systems, the wind, the rain just blasts down the street. So we want the best water that we can get. So we use 5.0. We pointed this, flashed it back with our trunk brush, we took our wood finish over it to give it a rough look. This product here, Storm Dry, is a fantastic product. This some people would disagree, you shouldn't be sealing brickwork. I would normally disagree in the past. It was actually Building Control who recommended me to use this. We were doing a knock through in South Shields a few years ago, and we, we put our steelwork in, drop the brickwork, you would normally put a cavity tray above your steelwork. The building spit are seen by cavity trays, you said don't bother putting them in Craig, use this product. It is quite expensive, but it saves a lot more time than putting cavity trays in. Where does it say, if you read this here, it is a breathable product. Let's say Thompson steel, for example. I don't know anything about it, but I've heard people say, if you apply that, it's it doesn't let the wall breathe, which is b bad because what we are doing here, we're pointing with lime, is so that the wall can still breathe. So, with this on, our wall can still breathe, and we are just giving it an extra layer of weatherproofing, waterproofing, which is fantastic. With all of that said, we are now, we are going now to our next job, which is for our client David Nicholas Construction. So if you've been following our job progress on YouTube, Instagram, you see the extension which we've just finished for him, where we built an extension on top of a garage. Let's just pan this out the way of that. An extension on top of a garage. Um, <coughs> where we built the extension on top of the garage. We fit this job in between and we back now over to Whitley Bay which is around half an hour away from us in South Shields. So we are going there now to just get a good idea of the job, drop off some of our stuff into our van a little bit. So we'll catch you when we get there. Bye for now. Right, we're we good. We're rolling. Right then, we are back in South Shields at the low top where we've been repointing the property just 200 meters down that road there. Purpose of this video, is not to show you this fantastic scenery that we have in South Shields. It is to demonstrate why we used NHL 5.0 lime while repointing the property just down the road. That is why, that is the North Sea. We get really, really bad weather systems and they just blast down these streets. So the number after NHL is the strength of the lime. So NHL 5.0 is a strong lime which is going to help combat the weather which comes from this sea and yeah that was the purpose that is why we are using it because this gets very naughty especially in the winter months so with all of that said you can have another look at this beautiful scenery i'm lucky enough to live in south shields so i get to see this every single day Anyway, we'll catch up with you in a little bit.